but let's get on to Pint. All right. Uh, Trav feels like he's repeating himself a bit here for uh, gold new gold producers that are missing the mark. What's happening with Pantoro's quarterly, Trav? Yeah, so you're, you're right. Like Pantoro's come out with their quarterly and, um, you know, this is a, a similar story to Red 5 and Calidus that we've, we've already told. You know, there are differences. But, again, this is, you know, a, gold, a WA gold developer that's raised money, built a gold mine and had some issues on ramp up. Those... Um, the, the quarterly that came out today essentially shows that they have a cash balance of $79 million and that grabbed my attention because in February this company raised $75 million um, and I think that just goes to show that the, the, the degree to which their current operations are not making money, in fact, they're losing, they're losing quite, a, quite a bit out the door there. So in, in February, Pandoro announced a merger with Tulla, which is their joint venture partner at the Norseman Gold Project. And simultaneously with that merger, uh, Pandoro raised $75 million at a 32% discount, which is a pretty big discount. When they raised the money, they pointed to the following issues on ramp up. This is just, just some, of, some of the specific ones. One was um, in relation to Open Pit, and they, they, they reported that they had below expectation drill and blast productivity causing excess dilution. Maddie, curious to get your take on what that means. Oh, I wouldn't say I'm an open pit expert, but any any dilution means that you've taken uh, material beyond the ore body that wasn't included in the design. So we talked about uh, suboptimal blasting. And look, this could be suboptimal blasting at, when they were talking at St. Barbara, but sub up, like that means you're usually bridging or you're leaving something behind. But when they refer to dilution, it means you're actually taking a lot of waste with the ore body that you weren't anticipating on taking. So, and then that dilution could possibly put the pitch shell out of shape, which would then cause dilution further on. So, look, hard to know without being there, but it's means that you're carting more dirt and the grade's dropping. So. Uh, I, I do know at Norseman that the, the gold mineralisation there is pretty indicative of these n- narrow, nuggety veins. So would, would it be a higher probability that you would get dilution given mineralisation like that? Well, di- dilution's only – there's planned dilution and unplanned dilution. So when – if there's a, there's a thin vein, you, there's a component of planned dilution that is like the – ore body shape that you're willing to take like your minimum mining with it's when you then go beyond that and there's wall failure rock failure whether it's um, open pit or underground that is and it it fails onto the dirt so the only way to get that gold dirt out is to bog or excavate and or dig that dilution material with it because it's all mixed in together so that's your unplanned dilution good good insight maddie the, the Pleasure, lads. <laughs> so, you know, and in, in Pantoro's case, stage one of their mine plan, it relies on providing a base load feed from the Scotia um, open pit and together mixed with high grade from the OK underground. That's that's the plan in sending both, both of those feeds through the mill. Uh, it, while they're doing the cutback on Scotia, there's been an over-reliance on the feed from Green Lantern, this, this deposit nearby. Scotia open pit and the green lantern grade to date has has disappointed with the ore there uh, being 0.79 grams per ton for the quarter while um, and, and and that compares to the reserves that are on green lantern at 1.3 grams per ton so so keep you're just keeping in mind that the, the gold in Norseman is quite nuggety so I think there is a higher potential for grade discrepancy when when, when modeling as well um, be, purely because you you have these very high concentrated hits and you're trying to average that out over um, a, a large area. And so it, it, could, it could go it could go either way. It depends if you if you're hitting the nuggety bits and then smearing that across, or you could be missing the nuggety bits and you're getting a positive reconciliation on the dirt. So which is the better option? And it speaks to the dilution issues they're having at Open Pit as well. Yeah, and then at Scotia, they they actually have been processing some feed from Scotia but advancing the, the cutback as well. And, and the, the grade there to date uh, has been better than at Greenland. It's at, to date in the quarter it was 1.08 grams per tonne, but that still leaves a bit to be desired when you compare it to the 3.6 grams per tonne open pit reserves for that pit. Um, and and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're ultimately kind of guiding to the fact that the cutback that they, they, they've been advancing at Scotia is going to lead to getting more of the high grade out and so things will be getting better there. 
In the quarterly, however, there was no mention of uh, a refinance process. I'll note that that Pandora has $30 million of drawn debt and they're merging with Tala who have $37 million of drawn debt and the two companies together when, when they announced their merger um, said that Pandora would be seeking to refinance that. Um, and and there's no steer to, towards any any advancement on, on that process. And both of those respective facilities, uh, by my math, were sort of looking to have some repayments due in this coming quarter now. So it'll be pretty pretty interesting to see how that pans out, given that the current operating cash flow from Norseman um, is 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 negative, and servicing debt on top of that looks pretty tricky. Albeit they will have. You know, like Pandora's got $75 million of cash. Tala um, might have some net cash at, when they merge together, but that net cash position might actually be neutral when you offset it with the, the debt. So they might be neutral net cash um, at, at merger by my math. And then if they, they'll, they're really under pressure to, to make Norseman make money. Um, and a lot of that is going to hinge on the grade that they get out of the ground. Is Do you see there's a bit of a fine line risk between these open pit, high ton, low grade gold operations. Like you've got Capricorn being a very successful company with it, but then a lot of companies like like Calidus and we've obviously seen Pantoro with their open pits and look, Gascoigne, like open P- pits P- that are really hitting the mark. Well, Pantoro is a different kettle of fish there, I think, because Norseman is high grade, well, it's supposed to be, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's only one million tonne per annum plant there because, because of the grade. So I think it is a, it's in its own separate category. But, you know, especially the higher the, the higher the plant, then I think, you know, absolutely the, the higher the focus should be on the execution and, and, and management and skill, et cetera. I think, I think with, with Pantoro, you have pretty high strip ratios because of these, these narrow veins and, and high grade. And so there's just a lot of costs that are associated with, with mining dirt like that. And I think they, they, they're really under pressure to get to that high grade stuff that we're seeing in, in the reserves um, soon for the math to stack up. 